Well, folks, hope you're doing well. I don't know if I probably should have brought this up earlier, but thank God if you're down in Texas and places like that, I remember last time it got cold. Know where your shutoff valve is for your water. Yeah, you should know where that's at. <laughs> if you know what I mean. Man, I should do a video. I need to probably get the stuff, but they make heat tapes that wrap around your pipes and you can plug it in. Heat tapes, okay? I don't it, Type it into the computer. And then they make your insulated, uh, I don't think I have any sitting out here either, but your insulated for your pipes. You know, the stuff's usually about so thick. You get real thin, you get thicker. And it's whatever size the pipe is. You might have to buy a little bit larger with the heat tape, but that goes around it. You know, you put your heat tape on. And and if you use if you use the uh, insulated pipe cover, you you don't necessarily have to wrap it around the pipe. You can just run it alongside the pipe and put that on. It'll help hold it'll help hold the heat in. And then you just tape around the uh, the insulated piece for the pipe and, and it'll hold it on and hold it together and and by God it makes a huge difference. Keeps pipes from busting and and things like that. Especially on outside walls. I mean hopefully, you know you just turn your faucet on a little bit, let it run. Hot and cold both, let them run. Yeah, I mean, you know, like about the size of a pencil lid. I don't have I don't think you got any pencils, but you know what I'm saying, you know, something about, about, you know, like that, you know, just, just let it run a little bit, you know, just so it doesn't freeze. So, anyhow, I'm totally off the subject, it just popped into my head, because people have had problems with that stuff before. But... <clears throat> talking to a friend the other day and and they and they thought anarchy was a bad thing and it it is to a degree now if you stop it back and go back through history usually between rebellions they have this spot of where there's anarchy and if you stop and think about this, how this country is formed between the Brits and, and us, there's a spot there where they were fighting them, and, there was a, and it was pretty much anarchy. If they would have won, they would have kept the rule over us like they were doing, and worse probably. And because we won, then we established our own laws and way we want to live our lives here in this country. Constitution, Bill of Rights, Declaration of Independence spelled it out. So there's a spot of anarchy there until the government actually took established and and and, and it was stuff. And people seem to think anarchy is a bad thing. Well, it's it's also a necessary thing. And as you work through it. Some of the worst things you could probably do is all of a sudden walk in, walk up, and say, "Now I'm the leader, and I'm going to take over, and all you're going to do." They say, "Well, we just fought the hell out of these people, so we don't fall into the same crap you're pulling right now." You might have another <laughs> war on your hand instead of coming in and saying, "Well, listen, we need to kind of organize, come together as communities, and you know, uh, plant food, you know, uh, build some fences, livestock, you know, raise some chickens, you know, get some water. I mean, we need to come together as a community for survival reasons and such." And people will go, oh, "Yeah, that's a good idea. We should do that." And they and they usually listen because it's 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 for the good of all. After that goes along a little bit, and everybody's kind of working together, and then they and then they get their house and they and, or their shelter or whatever, and <clears throat> and, they, and, they, and they're prospering somewhat because of everybody's eating and and uh, they're not starving and, and they're warm and dry and things and such. And then then 
somebody comes along and says, well, maybe we should establish a few rules. Then as, as a community, they look around and go, yeah, it might not be a bad idea. But you see, you do it in increments. You just don't shove it down someone's throat. You just don't go, oh, it's your, yep, you're going to, yep. that's what you're fought against in the first place. And then that's what I'm getting at is some people sit there and go, anarchy is bad, but it's a necessary evil to, to get to the point of where you want to be sometimes. And with that being said, you have to prepare for that. You have to prepare for a total shutdown of any, any decency, any morals, any values, anything that is basically good. You have to, you have to prepare for that breakdown. And your mindset is the biggest part of that, your mindset. And I've talked about this in older videos. But you have to, have, you have to get your mind right. You have to wrap it around it as, as you're not going to make it through. And besides that, you have to prepare. I mean, do you, do you bury some food out back? Do you put some over here and some over there and stuff? You're probably better off having some stashed around. Just like uh, protection, you need to probably stash some around. And maybe you're better off walking around with protection on you 24-7. You know, the old days, the cowboys, they carried a sidearm. And that sidearm was just to get them to their rifle. Because a lot of times, you know, sidearm sitting right here, rifles leaning over there against the post. Well, you're hell of a lot more accurate when depends who you talk to. <laughs> but usually, inherently, you're more ac accurate with a rifle than you are your handgun. Now there are some damn fine shots with a handgun, but most people that are realistic understand exactly what I'm talking about. And, and you need to build your house accordingly. Plywood's expensive. I, I, I get it. I get it. You know, and your best plywood's a good three-quarter inch sheet of plywood. Pretty tough stuff. And if you can't afford that, well, try some OSB or in a strand board. If you can't afford that, go... Two by fours are expensive too, but you know, you don't have to go buy a lot, you buy a few and just stack them up, stack them up, stack them up. So if you have to put them across your windows, you've got it. You can do that to help keep people out. Also, it keeps people in. That's why it's always a good idea to have a, a few uh, battery operated tools. So if you need to get out quickly, you can cut the damn things and be out. But you wanna you wanna you wanna think about this. You wanna put bars, you know, and stuff across doors and this and that stuff. So it's just not so easy just to bust into your house. You know. You wanna make it hard for them. And you don't want the lights on in your house when all this is going on. You want to be in the dark. <laughs> so and a lot of times you they'll tell you all kinds of things you shouldn't do, but there's things you need to do to protect yourself. You know, they, they, when it, I mean, I'm talking about when society breaks down. I mean, if you sat in a corner and the bad guy's in your house, Worst thing you can do be walking around because they're trying to find out where you're at. They come across you, they could harm you. If you're sitting in the dark and they don't see you or hear you, well, you got the other one a surprise, don't you? 
you understand where I'm saying and where I'm going with that. And when you're talking about things like that, you're better off talking about something like a, a good old-fashioned, just, you know, a good old shotgun. Short barrel, of course. But that's all my opinion. Somebody will say, oh, God, you just, you just said bad things and said bad things and blah, blah, blah. Well, I'll tell you what. I'm not a friend of this world. And I'm more concerned about your safety and well-being than theirs. God is not against you defending yourself and protecting your life and your loved ones and such. He is not against that at all. He's against other people being violent and coming at you, trying to harm you and kill you and take your stuff. He, he's against that. He don't want you doing it and he don't want other people doing it to you. But if people do it to you, the old fable. If the strong man knew when his house was going to be broke into, it would not be broke into. Now, he didn't go into detail and such, but if you go through the Bible, it'll tell you, you know, if you don't have a sword, buy, buy, you know, uh, sell your tunic. You know, I mean, he tells you things in the Bible. Your life is worth... everything and if these people had any respect for life and their own life they wouldn't do what they're doing so obviously they have no respect for their own life they don't have any respect for your life or your children or your loved ones or anything else so if they're not going to respect themselves enough to not be stupid and do ignorant things well bad things happen and hopefully not to you that's not doing a damn thing wrong, but trying to protect yourself and your home, your property, the whole nine yards. You didn't invite them in. They broke in. I mean, it's it's... You know, when we had the Civil War in this country, it was, we'd kill more of us than any war has ever done anything to us. Why? Right there. Oh, they talk about being slavery and such and that stuff, but it sure sounded good, didn't it? Had to go again with uh, one man telling another man how to live his life. Well, slavery's wrong. But every 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 color of skin and everything else has always been a there's always been that kind of group that's been a slave somewhere in in the in the in history. It doesn't matter the color of your skin, you've all been slaves at one time or another. So, slavery is just plain wrong. You don't own people. And the same thing with, with uh, you know, like women didn't have vote right, uh, to own land and voting rights and all this and that stuff. They're a second class citizen again. There's things in the Bible. <laughs> I'm not gonna get in it <laughs> because I'll watch I'll watch my I'll watch my uh well I will get into it. Yeah, screw it. They'll they'll unsubscribe anyways. But it, think about it. Think about it. Adam was created in God's image. Eve was taken from Adam's rib. Man's rib you see where I'm going with that he didn't create Eve quote a separate 
identity to walk beside. He could have done that. He could have created Eve in, well, he couldn't create Eve in his image because he created Adam in his image. But he had to take Eve from his side. So Eve was a companion to Adam. Now, there could be an argument made that, well, because Adam was created in the image of God, Eve, Eve could be considered divine herself because Adam was that way, you know, to God. You see what I'm saying? But anyways, what I'm getting at is Eve was, come, came from the rib. Right beside him. Not behind him. Not in front of him. Beside him. You go through life beside each other. Rooting for each other. Supporting one another. Not tearing each other down. Not, not being an ass and blah, 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 blah. <laughs> I thought of something that made me chuckle. I don't know if I should even say it, but it's funny. <laughs> one of the grandkids said to one of the others, gonna punch you in the face. <laughs> The other guy kiss I'll punch you harder <laughs> in the face. It made me laugh. I don't know where these kids come up with this stuff. They're just little kids. I mean, they're like five, six, you know. One looks at us and says, I'm going to punch you in the face. Another one says, I'll punch you harder in the face. <laughs> I was like, oh, man. I, nothing happened, but, you know, it was more. It, it were, they weren't really even mad at each other. They were just, I don't know, being little kids. They, they were they never got to a show and match or nothing. It was just kind of funny. Kind of had to chuckle about that. Anyhow. This just, I just got on here to, to basically let you know you have a right to defend yourself from this world. You're not a friend of it. It's going to come at you. It's going to come after you. It's going to single you out. And you know it. Jesus told you that. They hated him first. They hated him. They hated for what he stood for. Because he doesn't stand for what they stand for. He stands for the opposite of what they stand for. And they hated him for it. But there's no comparison. None whatsoever. He's the creator. Alpha and Omega. <laughs> I mean, they've got no choice. They've been to his will or not. Doesn't matter. So, this kind of goes back to my other one, also. Being a friend of the world. And you're not, and they'll come at you. That's why you have to have like-minded people around you, friends around you. Not Judas's. But people that think the same way you think and, and, and know that they're coming after you too. They're coming after you too. The Jews, the old fable, everybody's probably heard it. You know, uh, we'll, we'll do it a kind of a different way. They came after the Baptists first. I wasn't a Baptist, so I didn't worry about it. They came after the Pentecostals. I wasn't a Pentecostal. I didn't worry about it. They came after the Catholics. I was a Catholic. I didn't worry about it. They came after the Lutherans, and I was a Lutheran. But there was no one else around. 
and this is what this is what they do, just like they did with the Jews. The Jews didn't hang together; they all hung separately, metaphorically speaking. But that's what I'm getting at. They're going to come at you sooner or later. They're coming for you, and then their little beast system's going to shut you off. Nope. AI is going to watch you. It's going to control all of it. You're going to have a social scoring. You're a bad person. And they're going to shut you off. They're, they're doing that in China. You know, I mean, why do you think they're doing it in China? Well, look at them. They're a bunch of little heathens and stuff. Not, not, not everybody, but they are. So anyhow, I figured I'd get on here and there's other things you got to worry about too and that's, and that's protecting yourself and your family and your loved ones. You got a right to do so. I mean, that's just a God-given right. You walk out to the damn countryside and mess with a... Uh, uh, mama bear cubs or, or, or some little cub, you know, uh, 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 pups, some little coyote pups or wolf pup, anything. Mama will rip you apart. She'll rip you apart. By herself, a lot of times she'll run away. But if she got young, she will stand there and she will come at you. She'll kill you if she has to, to protect them. I don't care what the hell it is. Moose, doesn't matter. They do the same thing. Moose are pretty vicious. But anyways, that's just the law of nature. Say, it's built in you to protect your young, to protect yourself. So anyhow, like I said, keep praying for each other, praying for your leaders and, and your enemies and so on and so forth. You, you, you can sleep at night with a, with a clean conscience because you're doing everything right. That make you, that'll make you righteous. It's a journey, people. It's a journey. And you want to get to the end and you want to and you want to have a successful journey and get to your destination. So y'all take care. <laughs>